don't want to know how early it is. Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Pet and welcome to a very busy week and my MSRT Ford Ranger Limited Edition. I've had this car a couple of weeks now but last week I was on holiday in the south of France as you can tell from my lovely tan but this week I've got a fairly full-on week in the Cotswolds working away um, and I thought it would be a brilliant opportunity to do a bit of a kind of first impressions driving review of the Ford Ranger because I'm using it almost as a, a commuter vehicle and there's lots of other things happening this week that I thought would be interesting and you guys seem to like the kind of living with for a week video so hey let's make some content So what's the crack this week? Well, I'm currently driving to Cheltenham. Uh, Waze is telling me it's 109 miles. I've done this journey many, many times. It's a couple of hours, so I should be there for about nine o'clock, which is good because I need to be there by half past nine. I'm doing a bit of my old job again this week, bit of training, that's why I'm looking so smart. And then I'm staying with some friends in Stratford-on-Avon. First, an immediate impressions of the car um, I absolutely love the way this thing looks. It is ace. It gets lots of attention, lots of comments, probably because it's a little bit left field for me and a bit unusual to the kind of cars I would normally have. But it, it's certainly a looker. Um, and I quite like that about it. And I, and I guess really for me, the ethos about MSRT is their cars are very much based around aesthetics, improved aesthetics. So that kind of makes sense. Um, the immediate things this morning that are quite interesting is this car is huge it has a huge luggage capacity I can get over a ton in the back pickup part but that's okay if you want to carry oh I don't know a pallet of sand or bricks or some wood or some building stuff but if you want to put a couple of bags in it's not really very good so at the moment without the topper on there or some kind of cover um, that rear part of the car is unusable to me really and I can now see why you see a lot of these pickup style vehicles with some kind of hard top on the back either a roller shutter blind or even the whole kind of in-case bit that gives you that extra storage it makes the car a lot more practical so all of my luggage is in the back I've got some stuff behind my seat and I've got some stuff on the seat behind the passenger um, which is fine but I need to park the car up in a car park all day and it's got privacy glass so that's okay but I'm never a big fan of leaving things in the car when you're parked up in public it's just inviting some oik to stick something through the window and run off with it so from that perspective that's one downside of this format of vehicle at the moment anyway is I don't have any kind of secure enclosed storage <laughs> Driving this, first thing is, I kind of forgotten just how much I enjoy the elevated driving position you get in a big SUV pickup size vehicle. We've had quite a few in the past. I had a short wheelbase Mitsubishi Shogun, we've had a Land Rover Discovery 3, we've had a Range Rover Sport, and it, and it does give you a completely different perspective on driving. This, however, this is quite big. <laughs> I mean, it's it's long and it's pretty wide so you kind of have to remember that especially if I've just I don't know jumped out of my mini or something what I would say is the suspension in this car is relatively agricultural you've got leaf springs at the back and it's really designed to carry load and weight you know I can put a tons worth of weight in the back I can tow up to three three and a half tons and what that means when the vehicle's empty is amazingly, and I didn't expect it at all, this car's actually quite jittery when you drive it and it's got no load in it. The suspension's pretty firm and quite bouncy. So it kind of moves around a lot on the road. You kind of feel all the lumps and the bumps. And I didn't expect that at all. I assumed with it being such a big car, it would just 
glide over everything and smooth all the bumps out. You know, I expected it to basically flatten sleeping policemen and fill in potholes, but it kind of doesn't do that. It just rides over the over the bumps. And what that means is it's quite a um, it's not a relaxing drive. It, it's 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 quite an energetic drive. It's almost got the energetic drive of a, a firmly sprung sports car and you're not you're in a bloody great big pickup now on a longer journey i'm wondering whether that will mean that this car's not quite as relaxing to drive as i thought it might be we'll find out today because we're going to do a couple of hours in it um so it's not the smoothest or plushest of rides but i'll forgive that because it's not it, its primary design role is a work vehicle and a and a, and a load carrier and and you have to have the suspension set up for that right you it's very difficult to to have some suspension setup that can carry very heavy loads and then one that's nice and plush and soft and lovely when you want it to be last couple of things to mention from a driving point of view is gearbox wise it's a 10 speed auto um the change is actually through the gears it, it's it's almost you don't feel the steps it's just like this gradual change of gear and it's a really smooth gearbox it's actually quite nice um, in normal D I do have a sport mode that I can drop the gear stick back into I've not actually done that this doesn't ever make you feel like you want to get on it and drive sportily but I guess if you wanted to overtake something that would be a good mode and I can manually change between the gears. There's a little plus and minus sign on the side of the gear stick. And I'm, I'm guessing that would more be something you would do off-road. Uh, and then in terms of the main uh, driving, I'm in two-wheel drive high ratio. I, I wouldn't put it into the four-wheel drive option on-road. And that's definitely an off-road thing. And you've got a high and low ratio option for those. I plug my phone into Apple CarPlay, although it keeps dropping back to the main screen, which is a bit weird. Um, and that's all. All's good, really. Um, it's a fairly easy place to, to set up. I've got all the different driver modes. I'll kind of talk a bit more about that when I got on the dual carriageway. It's going on here. It's taking some roadworks down. That's not the best place to stop, but I guess needs must. <laughs> time I press mute for the stereo to record a bit to camera the car play goes back to the main sync 3 menu tweak that one so I have uh, cruise control so I'm just gonna set the cruise control it's not adaptive um, I'm gonna set it to 70 miles an hour and then the rest of the journey is pretty boring really <laughs> it's just like yeah I'll just sit here um, on the dual carriageway We have arrived in the centre of Cheltenham. Um, and that was a good journey, that. Now, really interesting, the MPG figure for that little journey there is 34.7. And I, uh, I don't think, for a vehicle of this size and weight, I don't think that's a bad number, you know. It's just got a two litre diesel, so, you know, it's still quite punchy in terms of performance. But yeah, I'm happy with that, 35 miles per gallon. Now, I don't think you get that in short journeys around town, but for me on a long journey, that's all right. You know, obviously, if you're in a hybrid or something like that, nowadays we want, you know, it's amazing when I post a video and say, oh, I've got 50 miles per gallon, people still moan and say it's not great. But I think 35 miles per gallon for something at this size is pretty good. Now, this is where I park. <laughs> this is where it's gonna be interesting because this thing is quite big in terms of fitting into spaces. So, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go back against this wall, I think. And then, <laughs> and then I'll show you just how a little space there is around the size of it. Uh, reversing camera, always helpful. Um, so that's me bang in the middle of the space, only just. Problem is, it's quite a long car, so, if I use the little camera at the back when it starts going beep, 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 beep. There we go. That's a 
that's me in. Right, off for a day's work. I'll just show you around the outside just to see how big it is. But yeah, it's a good journey that. Time for a wee though. So I am, I could maybe go back another foot. I'm right inside the bay. Then standard parking space. It isn't quite long enough, look. <laughs> anyway, fits in all right. Oh my God. Oh, get the engine on, it's a bit hot in here. Woohoo! What are we talking, 32 degrees. Get them blowers going, oh my God. Yeah, it's a bit warm. Good day training today I had a really good group and now I am staying as I said in Stratford which isn't a million miles away but I need to get some lunch or some dinner first on the way and then my friends I'm staying with aren't coming home from France till the evening and I'm looking after their puppy so schnauzer action one mile away from my mate's house and I've stopped into Waitrose on the way home to get me tea <laughs> I was I was so tempted with fish and chips but there's a fairly big health announcement coming to the channel soon. Basically, I've entered my first half Ironman. So I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of content around, you know, healthy eating and all that kind of stuff. Not that I've gone massively healthy this evening, but it's a little bit more healthy than fish and chips from the local chippy. Although that would have been really nice. So I'm in. <laughs> Hello, Buster. This is Buster and this is Maisie. <laughs> and the coolest house ever. Hello. I haven't seen you for ages, I know. <laughs> Buster's very snuggly. Hello. Hey, you like nice cuddles? Mummy and Daddy are gonna be home soon. They are. So I need to get my stuff out of the car. You're gonna you're gonna let me get up? No? You're gonna let me get up. Look, look, say, say hello YouTube. Say hello. Well, <laughs> oh, I know. Right, I need to go and get my stuff out of the car. Back in a minute. Now then, you join me a couple of days later um, in my week. It's actually Wednesday today. Busy day yesterday training. Last night I filmed my review with the Tesla Model Y, which by the time this video goes out will have already dropped. So hopefully you've watched that one. But I've just had to fill up with fuel. Uh, and I thought it'd be quite interesting. I was literally on fumes. I had about 25 miles of range left. I've just put 64 litres of diesel in this, a grand cost of £121. Uh, but actually, it's the, probably the cheapest diesel I've seen for a while, which is still horribly expensive. What did I just pay? £189.9. Um, and also, interestingly, because I've not had a diesel car for a very long time, certainly not since AdBlue was a thing, but I also had an AdBlue thing pop up saying that I needed to top up my AdBlue within the next, I don't know, 1,200 miles or something. So I've just put five litres of AdBlue in. Um, so I will be, let's just start the car and see how many, what range that's given me. Uh, AdBlue, I've just filled it up. So, oh, being turn right. off. So uh, that, even though you've done ah, checks, shut up so you. <laughs> so that has just given me full tank now 525 miles of range which i think is really really good but it is absolutely balmily hot today 20 degrees now stay tuned because tomorrow i think i'm going to do on my way to work tomorrow there's some nice twisty roads so i'm going to do some driving on that but then tomorrow or uh, friday evening i'm going somewhere really cool but i've got quite a pressurized got to get to a certain location by a certain time kind of journey but as the air blowers are really really loud um, uh, tune in tomorrow because on the way to work we'll have a bit of fun but yeah the joys of running a big car 121 quid ouch morning all it is now Thursday morning on my way to work beautiful day now I think we've established this car's big and imposing and it's relatively economic and it's good fun on a dual carriageway it's got quite a firm ride but what's it like when you get it on a nice bit of road like this let's put it in sport mode and push on a little bit now i guess first off this is by no means a performance car it's compromised in so many ways by its sheer size more than anything but when you get it on a little bit of a country lane like this it's just immense fun 
it's it's just it puts a smile on your face it's actually not slow by any means it, it kind of can push on quite a bit you have to be wary of its weight it does kind of roll through the corners a little bit you can probably see me bouncing up and down in my seat the suspension is pretty firm but it does a pretty good job of getting around the corners the brakes aren't too bad um, the rear brakes are drum brakes I can't remember the last time I drove a car that had drum brakes at the back but if you have one of these on your way home if you have a nice little bit of road it gives you the opportunity to have some fun and I like it I just this car cheers me up when I get in it I just I love driving it because I just think it looks really cool um, I love the elevated driving position and it's just good fun it makes you smile now then it's been a very long day at work and I've worked up a bit of a thirst so I need to go to a watering hole I think somewhere where I can get a nice refreshing cold beverage and somewhere where there might be some automotive porn to look at now it just so happens that right next to where I'm staying at my friend's house is one of the automotive porn meccas in the country 0.4 of a mile this way and it's called caffeine and machine plus I need to go there because I need a thumbnail <laughs> Whenever you do a video for YouTube, you always need to get a thumbnail. And I thought, oh, I need to get a good thumbnail. Bound to get one, a caffeine and machine. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's going down well. It is still roasting here. It's like half past five in the evening. It's still beautifully sunny. There's some really cool cars parked outside. Such a great automotive venue, caffeine and machine. I must kind of come here more often. But next up, tomorrow I'm going to finish the course uh, tomorrow afternoon, which is Friday. And then I need to make my way over to Watford because me and Mrs. Petroped are off to see Coldplay at Wembley Stadium. The challenge I've got is I need to get to Watford and I don't have a huge amount of time to do it. I've then got to get my car parked, check into my hotel, get on a train, get to Wembley Stadium and hopefully be there in time to see Coldplay. So there's a little bit of pressure, so stay tuned, because I think the journey tomorrow to see Coldplay could be a bit of high pressure, but at the end, if I get there, it's gonna be awesome. Yes! The week of work has finished, and I'm in the car 10 minutes earlier than I thought I was gonna be. So I have a journey ahead of me of 88 miles, I am due to meet Mrs. Petroped at the hotel at five o'clock. And my ETA says 4.43. <laughs> Is it possible? Can we do it? Now, um, in terms of what we've got ahead, so we're meeting in a hotel in Watford, Watford Junction. It's right next to the, the tube station. Dump our stuff in the hotel, get on the tube, get the tube down to Wembley. And that is where we're seeing Coldplay. Now, we've got hospitality and stuff, and I don't think Coldplay are gonna be probably coming on stage, till, I don't know, eight, half eight, I don't know. I don't know who the support act is either. But we wanna get there and enjoy the hospitality if we can. So, this is the kind of, you know, can I get there? Is the traffic gonna be kind to me? It's currently just coming up to three o'clock in the afternoon. So Waze is probably calculating while people are all still in work. Or, are people being sensible and enjoying the lovely weather and staying at home. Don't know, I'm gonna sneak in front of that one. But, let's go. Ah, the M25 is so bad, I've had to ring Darren. All right, mate. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Good to know you're stuck on the M25. It sucks, man. I wish we were on the M, I wish we were on the NC500 in a Cayman GT4. <laughs> Oh mate, that would be so much better. And, uh, but but uh, fewer bridges, of course. Yeah. And, uh, much less traffic. Or driving a mini to Turin. Oh god, another terrible thing we had to do. I know. So yeah. this is as close as to getting you on on this road trip as possible. Cheltenham right. to Watford in a Ford Ranger pickup. 
I feel I've gone down the rankings, my friend. <laughs> But um, uh, anyway, to, to, to you guys watching, uh, ETA is now six minutes past five. I'm going to be late, but Mrs. Petroped is behind me, stuck in even worse traffic. I've got 10 miles yes. to go, 20 minutes. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you got this. Come on. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Anyway, I'm going to carry on talking to Darren. I'll catch you nearer the hotel. That wasn't too bad a journey. I had a feeling the traffic would be bad. It's Friday afternoon. It's very hot still. It's still 33 degrees. But I'm only half a mile from the hotel. So I'm going to go and find somewhere to park the car, check in, and then join me at Wembley Stadium. And I'll finish the video there, I think. Because I think this evening should be pretty special. I've always wanted to see Coldplay in concert. So really looking forward to it. We made it, only just nightmare journey from Watford to Wembley Stadium, but as you can see, we are in our seats, we're ready for Coldplay anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one this week, following my journey with the MSRT Ranger, but we're about to enjoy Coldplay, but if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up, comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Petro Red Bull Collection, I'll see you on the next film. Anyway, from Coldplay, take care guys. I'd say.